The design of the John Deere 1050K dozer reflects a lot of consideration for safety, but does this automatically ensure safety on the job site? There are many pieces of safety equipment on the dozer, but there's no assurance that the safety equipment will get the job done unless you use the safety equipment that's on the unit. One of the most important pieces of safety equipment is your seat belt. Buckle up before you start the engine. The rollover protective structure by itself does not assure your safety in the event of an overturn. If you're not wearing your seat belt, you could be thrown or crushed, possibly by the ROPS itself. Don't operate under the mistaken impression that if a machine overturns, you can hold on or jump free. That impression may be fatal. Before starting out, make a quick check of the operational controls. It's better to take a moment now than to find out at a critical moment when it's too late to avoid an accident. Before you begin work, be sure you or your supervisor call the utility services in the area to have the job site marked for underground lines or structures. In most areas, there is a free or low-cost one-call locator service. It's better to take a little time before the project begins to know what you may encounter. If you doze or rip through a gas pipeline or an electrical line, you could be losing more than a little time. As was mentioned, it's up to you to use your safety equipment. And it's also up to you to use good safety judgment. As the operator, you have the primary responsibility for the actions of the dozer. Always think about what you have to do before you do it. Never stop thinking about what is the safe thing to do, not only for yourself, but for the people around you. This brings up another important point. There is only one seat and seat belt in the dozer. That's for you, the operator. These machines are not designed for riders. When working in close areas, reduce your speed. You never know what might pop out in front of you or in back of you. Even though the back of alarm is sounding, you still need to look behind you before and while backing up. Bystanders may ignore the alarm, especially in busy, noisy areas. You should also reduce your speed when in rough terrain to help you maintain control of the unit. Crossover obstructions at an angle. Ease up to the breakover point. Balance slowly on the obstruction and ease down to minimize the impact. On steep slopes, work diagonally starting from the base of the slope working upwards. Another point about working on slopes is that the hydrostatic transmission for each track provides for constant power even when turning. The result is that steering on a slope is the same as steering on flatter ground. The dynamic braking characteristics of the hydrostatic transmission prevent freewheeling of the unit when working on slopes. When not dozing, always travel at slow speeds with the blade as low as possible. It's important to be careful when working close to a trench to avoid a possible cave-in and accidental machine overturn. Backfilling perpendicular or at a slight angle to the ditch is preferable. A feature of the hydrostatic transmission system on the 1050K is an advanced load sensing system called power management. As you encounter a blade load, the dozer will automatically slow its ground speed so the engine RPM remains constant. It doesn't matter what speed the unit is set on. The engine will not kill under load. As the blade load decreases, the speed will increase up to the setting you had previously set. When shutting down the unit, there are a few simple procedures that you should follow. The machine should be parked on a level surface. Move the FNR lever to neutral 
and engage the park lock lever. Lower the blade and attachments to the ground. Slow the engine to low idle for a couple of minutes to cool down the turbocharger before stopping the engine. If you're shutting down for the day, it's a good idea to lock up the machine. You never know who might drop by. Another vandal protection item is the battery disconnect switch located behind the right rear access door next to the batteries. If you plan to haul the unit, you should always use caution when loading it on or off a trailer. Experience shows that this is one of the most likely times for a tipping accident. Be sure the trailer is sitting on a firm, flat surface. The bed should be clean of debris. Use chalk blocks against the trailer wheels to help prevent the trailer from moving. You should always fasten your seat belt before loading or unloading in case of overturn. It's recommended that you have a spotter to help you line up the dozer as you drive slowly onto the trailer. The end result is that the center line of the machine should be on the center line of the trailer and the dozer should be also balanced fore and aft on the trailer. Once on the trailer, move the park lock lever into the lock position. Lower the dozer and attachments. After cool down, shut off the engine. As before, lock up the unit against vandalism. Fasten each corner of the machine to the trailer with a chain or cable with appropriate load binder. Before you haul the machine, be sure of its overhead height to the ground. It's better to know your limitations beforehand rather than learning the hard way after you hit something. Be sure to banner and flag the trailer in accordance with state and provincial road requirements. As we've seen, the John Deere 1050K dozer is equipped with many safety features and systems, but it's up to you, the operator, to use them. You have to think about every move you make before you make it. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. It only takes one mistake to make the difference in your life and in the lives of others. Statistics show that of all the accidents reported, over 90% of the operators hurt or killed were listed as experienced. Accidents don't always happen to the other guy. That other guy could be you.